Hi guys, it is a dreary gray rainy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in this undisclosed swamp in the sunshine state where we need the rain. So not complaining, but it is a gloomy Saturday, February 13th, 2021, and uh, you guys might be noticing that every day I come to this spot and uh, spring is springing, and uh, spring is springing in February. I am so glad I am not in Austin, Texas the next few days or pretty much anywhere else. But anyway, I want to thank once again, uh, I'll call him Lieutenant JJ from, from New York sending me this little essay and uh, a little bit edgy for Collapse Chronicles. I was going to run this essay elsewhere. <clears throat> on YouTube, but uh, we're just going to push the envelope just a little bit at Collapse Chronicles coming from this website called The Stranger, uh, thestranger.com. Now technically the column is written by some fellow named Charles Mudede, I guess, Charles Mudede, and the name, uh, the title of his column is the greatest threat to the human race is not climate denialism, but climate optimism. And uh, I can certainly agree with that. So most of what this, uh, this is and what I'm going to concentrate on is this essay inside his article by this fellow Nicholas Money. Um, Nicholas Money is the author of The Selfish Ape, Human Nature and Our Path to Extinction. So if I ever start doing uh, interviews on this channel again, we need to uh, make sure we talk to Nicholas Money about our path to extinction. Um, so this is Charles's introduction to this essay, uh, <clears throat> which he describes as a short essay containing uh, Nick Money's thoughts on the current climate crisis, although I think it's a lot more than that. There was nothing in it but an unwavering realism. We are, according to money, at the end of what was known and entering an era that, by all indications, points to our extinction. To think otherwise is to live not in reality, but the maddest of dreams. And with that, he turns it over to Nicholas Money to take over from there. So take it away, Nicholas Money, and explain to anyone who does not understand this what is in store for us as the 21st century unfolds. <clears throat> take it away, Nick. Anyone who believes that Homo sapiens will adjust its course and halt the commerce that is founded on greenhouse gas emissions is refraining from critical thought. In 2019, Earth's atmosphere was disfigured by the largest annual release of carbon dioxide from fossil fuels in history. This is alarming but it is not surprising because the human population rose by more than 80 million in the same period and global GDP swelled by 3%. The biosphere is warming because there are more lives 
that are cultivated by burning ever-increasing quantities of oil, natural gas, and coal. Besides our atmospheric vandalism, we continue to acidify the oceans and have proven relentless in the removal of forest and natural grasslands. In short order, we anticipate more extreme weather events, crop losses due to drought and flooding, and the collapse of fisheries. Populations of the larger wild animals will continue to fall. Insect numbers will pursue their precipitous decline. Plant species will perish, and the microbial majority of life will shudder unseen. Yeah. Have you read any good news about the environment lately? I cannot think of one single joyful, joyful report about the biosphere in a very long time. And human prospects for survival are actually bleaker than most seem willing to admit. Do you think so, Nick? Do you actually believe that human prospects for survival are actually bleaker than most seem willing to admit? Let's imagine that we do devise a carbon capture system that reduces the level of greenhouse gases to the point that we cool off a little. What would happen next? Civilization would persevere, babies would keep coming, and the consumption of natural resources would accelerate. One way or another, we will destroy the components of the ecosystems that support life. Thank you, uh, Nicholas, for explaining this to anybody who thinks that the only planetary boundary is climate change. <clears throat> the path to extinction, and uh, when he says path, to, I'm assuming he's throwing in humans with all the rest of Earthlings. The path to extinction is difficult to avoid. I imagine that alien school children learn about the fate of civilizations once they begin burning their fossil fuels or whatever similarly damaging inventions apply to other Goldilocks planets. There are steps in this process comparable to the stages of cancer. From stage one, when suspicious cells are confined to stage four, where the illness has spread to other organs. As the late Christopher Hitchens wrote during his malady with cancer, quote, the thing about stage four is that there is no such thing as stage five, close quote. As a species, we have been hovering around stage four for decades. How long do the humans have left on Earth? Asked the school teacher on planet Zeta, and noodly appendages are raised with enthusiasm across the classroom. <clears throat> the end times will be horrific. Do you think so, Nicholas? The end times will be horrific, but there is no sense denying their proximity. As paragons of consumption in the United States, our behavior gifts us with a great deal of material comfort. An objective look at the ecological cost-benefit of electric cars and solar panels shows that these are nothing more than funeral decorations for a dying planet. Nobody talks 
about population. Hmm. Nobody talks about population, but it is too late to thwart the apocalypse by contraception anyway. Few of us have any immediate plans to change our lifestyles. One way or another, we will have to confront the end times. There is no technological fix. Today's opportunities for progress lie in psychiatry and philosophy. What sense do we make of our lives without a future for mankind? What sense can we make of a universe in which human consciousness will be extinct? Expressions of grace have always served us well in confronting our personal demise, and their value may rise when we accept that civilization is approaching its expiration date. The focus on the grand carnival of nature is what is different now. We may gain some personal sense of deliverance by looking squarely at the thing we have spoiled and admitting our fault, but the best that any of us can do until the sky falls is to be kinder to each other and humane towards the rest of life as it suffers with us on this watery globe. And who knows, if we are nicer, maybe things will keep running for longer than we expect. Amen, Brother Nicholas Money. I'll have to put the selfish ape, human nature, and our path to extinction on my reading list for 2021. And, uh, but I have got to uh, wrap up this... Uh, this, uh, whatever you want to call what that just was, this dose of reality, and, uh, go buy a first aid kit and a fire extinguisher for my hip camp. Anyway, I suggest you stock up on first aid kits and fire extinguishers while you still can. Bye, guys.